Hi, it's me one more time. Um, we're here to talk about the controls on your PIR. This is probably one of the most difficult things that people have a problem with, if you will, when they buy a unit with a PIR. So let me talk you through how I would take the steps to set this. After you've mounted the fixture to your electrical box, and prior to restoring power, in other words, your power is still off, okay? Take your dials, all right, and take the dial. This is the most basic, and we'll talk about the more complex units in another episode, but this is the most basic unit. The most basic unit is typically a 180 degree, anywhere from 60 to 70 foot range. The controls on the bottom were typically going to be rotary, although you might see some with slide switches. Uh, they basically operate the same way. Take the, ro take the controls, set your minutes dial to test, which is right there, right? Now there's a stop right there, so you can't go any further. Set it to test, and what I typically do is I set the uh, sensitivity, if you will, which is the distance, to the middle point, which is about 30 feet. You can always adjust that later. When you set this to test and you turn on your power to the electrical uh, box that controls the light, what the test mode allows you to do is essentially it disables the dust to dawn control that's built into this. So normally during daylight hours, and I can't think of anybody who would install this at night, but when you install it during the day, if it didn't have a test mode, you really wouldn't have a way of measuring or adjusting the controls. You really have to have this thing come on even during daylight hours. In test mode, it will do exactly that. So the PIR will see you in test mode, and when you do that, you can actually power it on and then walk out in front of the light, walk side to side, and the reason I say side to side is that the PIR is much more sensitive in side to side motion than it is in and out. Um, the in and out mode typically because of the Fresnel lens is kind of like a, a bicycle spokes. In other words, there's a bunch of, of indicators that, that spread out and you may be walking between indicators or, or sensitivity devices before it triggers. So walk side to side, that's your best bet. When you walk side to side, you can then take and adjust your sensitivity here, where if you want it at 20 feet or you want it at 30 feet, here's 50. The max on our particular unit for a 180 device is 70 feet. Now, keep in mind, at 70 feet, you may get a lot of false positives out of this because you're really pressing the PIR to really, uh, how should I say, work at a really really long distance so what it can do is that there's any number of things that can cross into its path that may trigger it um, most people unless they're trying to light up their entire backyard uh, if you're lighting up your driveway you probably want to be at 50 feet or under that works really well once you've got the setting and you've crossed in front of it where you feel that distance is appropriate for your particular installation then what you want to do is rotate this minutes knob out of test mode rotate it past auto do not leave it set on auto because the auto is your demarcation line you have to go past auto and then either go to a minute go to five minutes or go to ten minutes and what that does is it controls the amount of time that the lights stay on after it's detected motion and after you've set the time, for example, I personally, I don't need much more than five minutes on my lights. If, my, if that intruder or that animal hasn't left after five minutes, then there's obviously a, another problem. So I typically set it for five minutes, and then I'll set it for somewhere around 30 feet for my driveway, that's typical, and then I leave it at that. What's gonna happen is when I do that, the lights are gonna turn off. Why do the lights turn off? They turn off because you've taken it out of test mode. Out of test mode, what controls it is gonna be darkness. Behind this lens here is a dust to dawn sensor. 
So the dusk to dawn sensor will not allow the lights to operate during daylight, regardless of whether you see motion or not. So keep that in mind. You, it's gonna be, you cannot test this in anything other than the test mode during daylight hours. Um, but once you've set in test mode your distance and everything else, then you take it out of test mode, set it for the time that you want this to, to basically turn on from the time it actually detects motion, and leave it because it'll turn off and then at dusk when it gets dark then the unit becomes active so it will only operate at night which is when you want it to operate um, and it basically then takes over everything it only comes on when there's motion now as long as the motion's still there the light will continuously re repeat and stay on so even if you have it set for five minutes and let's say your dog is outside and crossing in front of the motion sensor, it'll go five minutes, then it'll go 10 minutes, it'll go 15 minutes. As long as your dog is crossing in front of this thing, it'll constantly stay on. If it's an intruder or, or uh, a nuisance animal um, and it basically gets startled and basically runs off, it'll turn off after the time setting you set it for. In this case, five minutes. So that's the way it works. Um, it's fairly easy as long as you understand how it operates um, and basically I think anybody can do it as long as you understand how the uh, controls work. Thank you.